gentleman from New Jersey for five minutes, Mr. Mandrew. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Racking Member. Um, just very briefly, um, I respect Mr. Green very much, uh, and I, I feel for his passion. I'd like to say, though, that there are a lot of people right now in the United States of America that are going through their own personal hells for many reasons, whether it's drug addiction, whether it's homelessness, whether it's problems that our Americans who live here and work here and try to function here have. And uh, I think our immigration system, respectfully, we are not doing as good as we could do. And I believe that we could do much, much better. And quite frankly, we were doing much, much better. Um, Secretary Mayorkas, when you testified before this committee in September of last year, you stated that DHS continues enforcing our immigration laws, and to my surprise, you said that we were responsibly managing our border. In the last fiscal year, there were over 2.3 million recorded migrant encounters at the southwest border, which included 98 non-U.S. citizens who were on the terrorist screening data list data set. As you know, these figures do not represent those who avoided detection, which was estimated to be around 600,000. To attempt to combat the crisis on the border, you have deployed highly trained and highly skilled federal air marshals to the border to perform non-law enforcement duties, such as hospital watch, transportation, and welfare checks. There have even been reports that marshals are performing janitorial duties. I have the largest air marshal training center in the United States of America in my district, and I've seen firsthand how talented and capable they are. DHS is removing hundreds of air marshals from the skies during one of the busiest travel seasons of the year, even though you have stated that America's aviation infrastructure is a very high threat and is a target. Furthermore, DHS is even classifying how many high-risk flights are not being covered due to your decision to deploy air marshals to the border. How do you justify this deployment? Don't you think it would make more sense to hire more border patrol agents who are trained for this and finish the wall, yes, finish the wall, rather than continue to mishandle the crisis. But now we're mishandling it at the, at the expense of aviation security. So where we had one problem, which is a terrible problem, and I disagree with you thoroughly that uh, there isn't a problem there. We can turn the TV on now on just about any news station and you can see what's going on. This is not rocket science. It's not complicated. The American public can see it. Everybody can see it and it affects the whole country. But instead of having just one problem, now we have two problems because what we're doing to the air marshals. Enough is enough. Why can't we just do the right thing, the simple thing, and the functional thing? Why can't we go back to where we were, where we had so much less of a problem? Congressman, a, a few thoughts. Uh, first of all, thank you for accurately um, describing uh, the expertise, the professionalism, uh, mm -hmm. and the bravery of our federal air marshals. Of course, it is uh, a false uh, that uh, they are deployed uh, to the border to um, uh, conduct janitorial services. We have contract personnel. Uh, to do that. Um, you make a very, very important point. You asked the question, uh, why uh, can we not um, hire more Border Patrol agents um, out in the field? And I think that's a very appropriate question, uh, and uh, there's a very compelling answer for that. You know, for the first time since 2011, we have presented uh, to Congress a budget uh, that seeks uh, to plus up our Border Patrol agent personnel we request a budget uh, to fund 300 more Border Patrol agents. Every single year since 2006, I believe it is, the Department of Homeland Security has relied on the Department of Defense to augment its resources to address the challenges uh, at the border. So this is not something new. I look forward to working with you to see what we can do to pass a budget that calls for additional resources for the Department of Homeland Security to address the challenges not only 
at the southern border, but all of the challenges. Secretary, I, I appreciate that, and I don't mean to interrupt you, but I have like five seconds here. Um, the problem with the budget is there's so many unpalatable, unacceptable other parts to it that, as you know, it's the old game that's always played in politics. Jam a budget or jam a bill or whatever it is with all kinds of other issues and initiatives that a lot of people don't want to see. If we had a standalone uh, appropriation to do this, to fund this, you would see it go through in a second. So if you want to fight for that, I'll fight by your side to get more Border Patrol agents. I'll talk to the president, as I know that you would, and let's see what happens. But it shouldn't be jammed with all kinds of other initiatives that we don't want. Gentlemen's time has expired. Chair recognizes.